Welcome back to Sagit Neto's channel. As you can see, I'm about to check the clearances for my bearing. I was doing my piston earlier, but uh, I found out that there was a crack on one of the group. So now I emailed the seller and hopefully I can get a replacement for it. And it's not good, man. It's not good. I know I have a lot of things to do, but still, you know, something like that is, I don't like. But this will do for now. I made sure that there's no nicks or race materials on those flanges. Remember I put some uh, threadings on there so I might have something that created something there. Torque this in two stages up to 58 pounds a foot. Start at 30. One sweep. Next is take it off. Try not to move the crankshaft. Be careful when you bring it up. Next, we're going to uh, get a small piece and we're just going to compare number five looks like I'm getting uh, 1,000 there number four also 1,000 that's 1,000 1,000 and that's 1,000 looks like I'm within yeah I'm right on the minimum 1,000 right there all of them are 1,000 so I'm good new bearings so but it turns. Once it turns, should be good. That day when I found out that the uh, ring land was cracked, it's one of these things right here. Yeah, the uh, you could hardly see it on the camera, but uh, yeah, it was pushed in, and the spacer would not even go into the land, into the groove. And it's a good thing I caught it in time. Here it is. I got it all exchanged. And I'm not going to go uh, too deep on how I got this. But thank God to eBay Protection Program. It's one of those things that uh, 
it protects both parties i'm not uh, <laughs> sponsored by ebay by the way seal ring installation you have seen how i shown this earlier uh, this is how i do my uh, ring orientation before this is the h22 engine but i'm gonna do something different i have been reading from what this guy was saying he was following the 2002 rsx k20 installation and he found out that 2006 k20 a2 are different when it comes to piston ring installation and i'm going to follow the 2006 i'm not sure it makes any difference but from what i've been reading on the thread yeah nothing no difference whatsoever yeah i guess it's just different techniques so i'm gonna give it a try as long as i'm not putting those ring gaps line up to one another i'll be okay and from what they said that the piston rings it travels or it rotates inside the block yeah this is not the normal way of me doing this thing uh, remember I, I was checking the uh, old clearance on the crankshafts so i got the the girdle all buttoned up and everything but i have to remove that again otherwise it's on the way yeah but right now i'm just going to stick all the four pistons on there flip it around or turn it 180 degrees and remove the uh, main girdle a little bit of oil in the cylinder walls you have to make sure everything is all oiled the more the better double check the rings make sure it's facing where it should be I have the ring compressor I'm going to put the ring compressor right about in this area maybe like just past the wrist pin area identification stamp make sure it's facing the timing belt area make sure I'm all square and give it another squeeze and just tap it gently if you feel any obstructions or binding stop reassess And remember those dimples that I put on my identification this is number two so I'm gonna place it exactly what cylinder it came off from double check make sure that the uh, rings the gap is all facing where it should be plenty of blue Compressor. Make sure I'm square. Give it another squeeze. Go. Give it a tap. All the pistons are inside I'm gonna flip it over and remove the girdle hopefully the piston won't fall off
plastic gates all in place. Now it's the cap. Have to make sure I'm aligned with the tabs together with this. And my identification marks should be together, facing one another. Number two. Yeah, it makes a lot easier. The tabs has to be facing the exhaust side, which is this side. Number four. There. The rod balls are all soaked with oil. Just hand tight for now. Make sure you don't turn the uh, crankshaft or rotate them or something. Otherwise, you'll have a uh, erroneous reading. 10, 14, plus 90 degree turn. Okay. 90 degree will be right here. And I'm just going to give it a turn. Till I reach that right there. 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 Ninety. There. All set. Next, take it off. It is getting dark, but we'll be able to finish this. Rod bearing to journal, all clearances. Of course, this is uh, F23, but they're all the same. Pretty much like, uh, they're not really that far out. Serviceable limit is up to 24 and 22. 22 to 24. Still over 2,000. Yeah. So I think I'm good. Yeah. And this one here. It's about... One and a half. Yeah. Number two is one and a half. This one is a little bit loose. A little over 1,000. So I'll say this is one and a half. Right there. Yeah. Less than one and a half. So we're all good. All the old clearances checked out good. Crankshaft together with the rod bearings and all that. This is where I'm going to end this video and I'll see you guys till the next. Bye everyone. I'll see you guys. Okay? Bye-bye. Have a good day.